I believe that we're gonna be stuck in this pause where the Fed doesn't raise anymore, but they also don't pivot. Hello everyone, Mark Moss reveals today that the Federal Reserve funding interest rate is not the real key number. We should look at rather the key number that can provide value which he disclosed in this video. Subscribe now, hit that bell icon, and embark on an enriching journey toward financial success. Let's unlock the potential of these markets together and pave the way for a brighter financial future. Welcome aboard. Are they gonna pivot? When are they gonna stop raising? When will they start lowering and, and so forth? Specifically, like I said, the pivot. And the pivot to me means that they're going from a period of raising rates and then into lowering them. Now we could also talk about the pivot as far as going from tightening to easing. I think there's stealth easing going on. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. But in this, in this instance, we're talking about going from a raising rates to lowering rates. Now, right now, projections are anywhere from two to four rate cuts for next year. Now, there could even possibly be um, lowering rates as much as a whole point next year, depending on, of course, what happens. But the Fed might not actually need to cut. And if so, there could be a very serious risk if they actually do. So they might actually not. So instead of watching the first order effects of what the Fed funds rate is doing, what we should be doing is watching the real policy rates. You see, it's not the actual Fed funds rate or the Fed policy rate itself, but actually the so-called real policy rate. And that real rate is when it's adjusted for inflation, which is the market interest rate minus inflation. So for example, if the Fed rate is 5% and inflation is 3%, the real rate is 2%. In 2021, then when the Fed rate was zero and inflation was 6%, the real rate was minus six. So focusing on the Fed and uh, when they're going to lower rates next year, it's really the wrong question. You see, the Fed can actually passively tighten or they could passively loosen by either adjusting the rate or just leaving it alone. You see, passively tightening would work sort of like this. Let's say that inflation continues to go down, but the Fed just holds rates. Well, then the real policy rate would be moving up. Tightening. While everyone is focused on the Fed funds rate, specifically when they will pivot, going from you know raising rates and then pivot into start lowering them again, um, the projections are showing that for 2024, there's anywhere from between two to four rate cuts next year and possibly lowering rates even a whole point. But the Fed might not need to cut. And if so, there could be very serious risks if they do. Now, if they don't, this leads into like a pause where they stopped raising, but they're not lowering. Now, this has historically been great for markets. As a matter of fact, uh, we'll get to down the end. I'm going to show you the stats. The three-month and six-month returns on a pause, they're better, almost double what you'd see in a normal year. Now, if you wanna know exactly what I'm expecting to happen next year and what I'm doing about it, I am having a live presentation. There's a link down below. You can come join me for free. I got about 30 charts and slides to show you and I'm gonna answer all your questions for free and throw you the, show you the three main assets that I'm gonna be buying during this. So come check it out, come hang out, it's free. But instead, uh, the lesson is instead of watching first order effects of what the Fed funds rate is doing, what we should be watching is the real policy rates. You see, it's not the actual Fed fund rates or the Fed policy rate itself, but actually the so-called real policy rate, which is adjusted for inflation. So these passive changes by the Fed not doing anything uh, are passive, and they can reinforce, they can add to, they can exaggerate whatever economic trends are already happening underlying elsewhere in the system. You see, the Fed is not the end all be all. There's lots of moving parts, specifically the treasury, which we're gonna talk about. But if the Fed does not reduce rates, then the Fed is conducting passive tightening and it doesn't want or it doesn't need. Now, let's talk about why they may not actually wanna cut rates. Let's argue against cutting rates. Now, we've been already seeing loosening happen, all right? So the financial conditions have already been loosening without any rate cuts at all. Why have conditions been loosening? Why did we see markets take off last month 
without any rate cuts happening? Well, there's kind of three reasons why. First of all, it's what we call jawboning. Uh, the Fed, Fed speak, they're talking, they're telling us that they're going to do something. They're telling us, getting our expectations up, expectations of future rate cuts. So one is jawboning. They're just talking. They're not doing anything. They're talking the rate down. The second is because of what they've been saying about pausing and the, and the dot plop or the rate cuts that we're expecting next year, people are expecting expectations of future rate cuts. And third, there's a shift in how the Treasury says it's going to manage debt. You see, it's not about the Fed at all. It's about what the Treasury is doing and how they're going to manage the debt. So what we can see is that the Treasury has actually been manipulating the markets without the Fed doing anything. So all eyes are on the Fed when it's actually the Treasury. Let me give you a couple examples. In August, the Treasury dramatically increased the supply of longer term debt issued into the market, the 30 year bonds. That announcement set off a multi month trend of higher interest rates and tighter financial conditions. It wasn't the Fed, they didn't do it. It was the Treasury. Just by saying long term debt, it tightened financial conditions. The market was primed for a repeat of this at the very next refunding announcement, but then in November, we saw the opposite. Instead, investors got surprised by the Treasury's decision not to further increase the long duration, but instead the Treasury opted to keep the share on the short-term bill issuance. And the debt auctions in the first quarter of 2024, near 60%. Now this is far above historic averages, uh, closer to like 20%. It's a big jump from 20 to 60, three times difference. Now, the result was a near 1% decline in yields on the longer term debt, driven in large part by a reduction in the term premium or the compensation that investors require for taking risks over a longer term period. Now, this is exactly how the Fed and the Treasury have been, and they're going to continue to fight things out. You see, the Fed's trying to tighten, but the Treasury is in the driver's seat here. Now, I've outlined this for over a year. It's a battle, what I've been calling a battle between the Fed and the Treasury. The Fed is trying to tighten the monetary policy to get inflation under control, but financial conditions have already loosened significantly, in part because of what the Treasury is doing. Now, for the Fed to compound this loosening by cutting rates right now, would completely risk stimulating the economy and driving inflation back up, which is exactly what they've been trying to fight. Now, of course, the markets responded to this, which is why we saw mortgage rates. They went from 8% down to 7%. It's a pretty big move. We saw the stock market return 9% in the month of December. Now, that's usually an entire year's return. We got it in a single month. Bitcoin shot up 32%. Gold was even up as much as 8% before both of those have sort of pulled back a little bit right now. But we can see that using this data about whether the Fed will cut rates or nah, we can see that the argument for adjustment cuts is to avoid the passive tightening. But it would be a mistake for the Fed to ignore the huge amount of treasury induced loosening of the financial conditions, which sort of gets rid of the need for more monetary adjustments for the Fed. If they cut rates now, it would throw gas onto the inflation fire and it would risk probably shred any blast of amount of credibility or reputation that the Fed might have left. Okay, so that's a lot of new information, right? But what do you do with this? How do we make this actionable? Well, what we want to do is look past the Fed funds rate as the end all be all number. You see, while everyone's focusing on the Fed, waiting for the Fed to pivot or pause because they think that's when risk assets will take off, it's already been happening. It's been happening by the Treasury, which is why we've already seen them take off, which is why most people completely miss this. Not if you're watching this channel, we've been covering it. But what happens is we want to realize that what the Fed is doing is reactionary to the rest of the market. Remember, they can passively adjust the market by doing nothing. So they're responding to the other forces that are out there. And so to understand what they're doing and why they might do it, we have to look at it. Before they even announce it, you have to understand what and where inflation is and what the monetary policy of the treasury is or the fiscal policy is. Okay, so you're probably asking yourself now, uh, Mark, just tell us, will the Fed cut rates 
or nah. All right, now I'm gonna tell you what I think is gonna happen, uh, but I do just wanna let you know that uh, regardless of what happens, you should be ready for it. Um, I believe we're gonna have a long pause and I believe this is going to big, leave a window where things take off. I'm gonna break down that math for you, but I am having a live presentation where I have about 30 charts prepared, where I'm gonna show you this whole Fed and Treasury fight. I'm gonna show you what this pause looks like. We're gonna look through historical uh, data and I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm doing. The three types of assets that I'm buying during this pause and you should be too. So come check it out. There's a link down below. It's a free event. If you want to come hang out with me, um, look at the data. The picture's worth a thousand words. Get your questions answered while we're there. All right. Now, what do I think is going to happen? I believe that we're going to be stuck in this pause where the Fed doesn't raise anymore, but they also don't pivot, right? They don't start lowering rates again. Now, Again, they have to do this. They have to leave them higher for longer, as I said, if they wanna save any shred of credibility that they have left, all right? Now, this is also, like I said, it's historically really good for markets. On average, during the three month periods following a Fed pause, stocks rose 8% and were positive in five out of six periods looked at. Average increased by even more, just under 13% during the six month period following a pause and were positive in five out of six periods. Now, the average rate, you know, depending on a 60, 80 year period, whatever you look at is about 8%. So to get 13% in the next six months is really good. So it looks like the markets are already off to the races. Most of you missed it because you're looking at the Fed pivot, didn't understand there was the stealth easing going on by the Treasury, but it looks like that will continue this into 2024. Should start off with the bang and should keep going. Thank you for watching the interview highlights of Mark Moss. If you enjoy this highlight video, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.